Hey everyone. All right. This is uh, the second video for the non-computerized uh, fire control system. Uh, I'm starting to call it the uh, Logic FCS. So this is building off of an idea that sprang up uh, earlier in the year, probably around December, January, and to get rid of the microcontroller and build a very, very basic uh, fire control system. And so this is the prototype that came up um, around February and uh, had some modifications. Basically the original idea uh, is to replace the uh, all the microcontrollers with a uh, flip-flop or in this case a triple five timer. Uh, the reason is that um, the triple five timer has all of the functions that we want and it operated directly off of the um, battery voltage so there's no voltage regulators to fry um, all of the parts are um, capable of handling up to 15 volts so there shouldn't be any risk of um, parts being damaged by old, by spikes or anything like that um, so the second iteration here uh, it's a little bit smaller everything that that was in this chunk over here got integrated into a smaller board you can see it's dual sided this is um, this is the MOSFET over here it's uh, PSMN 1R0 um, actually it's a, it's a MOSFET that a lot of you might know that Gandalf uses on his design uh, some of the components here basically were taken off of Gandalf design um, the main thing here is that we've got a quad NOR gate, a triple five timer over here, um, along with uh, another uh, timer on the back side here. All those are you know, working in, t uh, in combination to basically um, filter out the trigger signal, the cutoff signal, the fire select signal, and make sure that uh, it completes a cycle. Um, and drives the drives the MOSFET. Um, so the MOSFET is dri being driven uh, at 15 volt or at at battery voltage. So um, it it's definitely um, a, a pretty nice uh, way of driving it because you don't have to worry about the the turn on voltage of the uh, MOSFET. Um, so this design uh, calls for using the um, uh, Black Talon Concepts trigger board. So I have a V3 gearbox here that already has the Talon Black Talon Concept V3 trigger board uh, inside. Uh, this came out of an AUG. Uh, it doesn't have any significant modifications to it um, other than uh, spring and the nozzle uh, and maybe the piston. I don't recall all of it but um, you know the for testing this is basically it it doesn't have a fire select um, plate here because it is an AUG but um, otherwise you know the uh, the wiring and this board is designed to interface with uh, the black talon uh, trigger board um, so let's go ahead and hook this up take a look So one of the things that are that I found with this design and it's kind of learning as as I go as well. Um, it's actually very uh, very good at uh, completing a cycle re uh, at a or re very repetitive um, cycle completion. Uh, but there is some dependencies in terms of uh, you know your gearbox setup and your part selection. So you know. 
uh, as some of you might know, you know, if you have a, a really high torque motor or, you know, compared up with uh, um, a weaker spring, but, and, and all the gear ratios, and in some cases, you know, driving them with the, with my 9.6 volt uh, NIM batteries pack was definitely very, very consistent. Um, I have a mark on the sector gear where I can see it pretty much stopping in the same spot every time. Whereas if I go to um, the 11 point, the 11 point uh, one volt um, lipo, I definitely see a slightly different behavior uh, in terms of where the gear uh, stops. Um, so here, let's go take a look at this. All right. So once it's connected. So, bring it up. And the, the thing that I would note is that I've got a mark here on my sector gear. Uh, right now it's pointing at about uh, maybe 630. Um, and every time, every time I pull the trigger, it stops in the same spot. Right. And then if I hold this down for full auto, right? No, definitely no problems with full auto. Okay. So one of the things that uh, I notice now is after the full auto, um, the sector gear definitely stopped at a different spot. But as soon as I go back to full to semi auto the the sector gear basically resets to the same spot that it was before okay so now if I unplug this guy bring over this side bring over the light bulb uh, same thing uh, but you would notice Notice that the, the noise is higher pitched and faster. But you also notice that um, if you pay attention to the way the nozzle um, ends up, there's definitely um, a slightly different behavior in terms of, is not quite as consistent in where the sector gear ends up. It still can be consistent, but uh, I've had times where it gets into this um, sort of a, a beat frequency where uh, it it goes to a short stroke and then a long stroke, short stroke, long stroke. Um, same thing with full auto. All right, so definitely no problems handling the, the, uh, the lipo. Yeah, so you can kind of see where it goes from a short to a slightly longer stroke. Short again, long again, short. All right, so, well, there you have it. Um, so this circuit, uh, in my mind, is uh, as far as it needs to go um, to, you know, for, for somebody to actually pick it up and use it. Um, the thing is that uh, having the Black Talon trigger board might actually hinder uh, some people from trying it just because of the fact that you know not everybody has one. Uh, if you have one, you know it, uh, that's great. It would be a quick plug-in to try it. Um, but the whole point of this was to sort of prove that the concept with, of a, a, a fire control system without um, any microcontroller is... Uh, can be done. And I think that, that the amount of circuitry uh, that ended up being on this board is quite reasonable. Um, I would, uh, my, my, the next objective really is to kind of take this concept um, and move it into um, maybe something that's integrated into the trigger board. Um, but there's also the, 
the idea of deleting the MOSFET so that the wires coming out of the, tr uh, the trigger board can really be used to drive any MOSFET that uh, you want to hook up to it. So the, the basically the job of the trigger board really is to make sure that um, uh, you get a, a better trigger and you get a cycle complete feature and, um, and then whatever MOSFET you want down the line in order to drive the motor, that's up to you. Uh, so that requires a little bit more work in terms of uh, you know laying out the right board dimensions and also uh, in my mind I really like to uh, put some work into a better trigger itself. Um, uh, actually a, a trigger that has a more mechanical sear feel to it. So that's another project that's uh, that I'll be working on but for now um, I think this is pretty good uh, and I'll be uh, putting a list of um, components so the bill of materials will be on the on the uh, airsoft mechanics forum uh, also the board layout is going to be available for anybody to order on uh, OSH Park uh, all the parts that I bought is from DigiKey um, the parts might look pretty small but you know if you can if you can solder a MOSFET together um, you know a, a typical 30, 34 or whatever um, you'd be able to handle this board um, and in some cases I think you know somebody that wants to take this further can certainly make things a little bit more compact if you if you really want to spend the time to to uh, optimize this board but right now um, if you look at the size of it it's you know it's, uh, I think it's about the same size uh, a little bit smaller than the uh, the, the chimera and uh, other than the placement of these wire of these connectors, which some people might like or not like, um, you know, you could even just solder directly to the bo the, to the board. Um, I think uh, this this is a good start. All right, thanks everyone.